19 million dollars. That's how much the state predicts taxpayers will lose this year because of growing public assistance fraud. It's awful. Four years ago, the state implemented new technology relying on a series of questions during the online application process. Investigative reporter Darlene Jones asked why the multi-million dollar program hasn't seemed to help. This arrest affidavit describes the owner of the Hay Meat Market in Ocala as a woman who took taxpayers for more than a million dollars. We spent hours trying to find her. The meat market is now for sale. Her home in Gainesville just sold to new owners. Her alleged customers, Letitia Johnson and Marcia Mason, were arrested last month for felony welfare fraud. Both have pleaded not guilty. Marcia? Yes. Darlene Jones with Channel 9. Can we talk to you about the... She threatened to call police. Why were you selling your food stamps? Investigators believe Johnson and Mason sold their food stamps to the market's owner for 50 cents on the dollar. You're right, it is taxpayer money that's being stolen. Jack Heacock heads the Public Assistance Fraud Division at the Florida Department of Financial Services. For three years, he's been responsible for battling this growing trend statewide. Food stamp fraud topped $12 million last year. Already 559 cases uncovered in the first three months of this year, costing taxpayers $4.2 million. I think it's the, the online application that the ease of access to public assistance benefits um, kind of encourages people to, uh, to give it a shot. Records provided to us by the state attorney's offices throughout Central Florida show a majority of cases aren't prosecuted. Defendants are typically offered plea deals, sent through diversion programs or probation. Public assistance fraud is a felony and can come with five years in prison. We could find few cases in which that actually happened. People need to know they can go to jail for that. Um, it, it's, it's all dependent upon our state attorneys. Eric Finote and Quinteria Williams could be the exception. They pleaded not guilty to public assistance fraud, accused of filing nearly 800 food stamp applications using stolen identities and selling them to the former owner of this Apopka grocery store for cash. Well, Marcia. Back in Ocala, although Marcia Mason didn't want to talk, this man came out of her home, suggesting everybody cheats the system. Tax bill, you feel me? They skin they down, so if you feel me, y'all skimmers too. Darlene Jones, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Federal investigators would not provide details on why the store owners still have not been arrested or confirm or deny any ongoing investigation. DCF told us the feds forced them to allow applicants to opt out of a series of questions that help weed out fraud shortly after that new technology was installed four years ago. However, the agency has still stopped $669 million worth of public assistance fraud since then, and that's what they are proud of. An investigation is underway involving the alleged misuse of tens of thousands of dollars. The money was apparently taken using false information and fraudulent paperwork. Call 6 Chief Investigator Rafael Sanchez joins us with the details about those dollars. Erica, good evening. Despite all the checks and balances, one couple accused of cashing in on programs set up to help families struggling financially. Nicole and Sam Britt came to court each with their own attorney. The couple accused of ripping off programs meant to serve the neediest in the state. Call 6 investigates obtain records that show the couple was accused of being involved in fraud and theft dating back to January 2013. Nicole Britt allegedly told the state she was unemployed or working part-time to get food stamps and assistance for child care services. In fact, Britt at the time was working full-time for the Indianapolis Housing Agency. The total she and her husband are accused of illegally obtaining nearly $113,000. The Indianapolis Housing Agency cut ties with Nicole in February 2016. As part of the fraud accusations, federal investigators say she forged documentation claiming she was only working part-time. The IHA supervisor, whose name appears on the documentation, had no knowledge of the paperwork allegedly doctored to get welfare. Britt reportedly confessed in a letter to the state saying she had submitted fraudulent documents and said yes to using work equipment to commit fraud. Despite all the checks done on recipients statewide, in 2017, there were 320 substantiated cases of food stamp fraud, totaling more than $1 million. Also last year, there were 58 cases of fraud statewide involving the child care program, 
totaling more than $176,000. So that's the big picture. In this case, I requested an interview with the couple now set to go on trial in June. Nicole Britt's lawyer said, in his own words, we have no comments regarding the case at this time. The lawyer for Samuel Britt texted me saying, decline to comment. And you can take action on this. Any dollar that's misused does not make it to a family who needs it the most. You can report welfare fraud by calling 1-800-403-0864. Erica? We broke the story last night about a Department of Human Services employee facing welfare fraud charges. Tonight, we're learning new details about the case and Sierra Selden Ruffin's status at the agency. 24-Hour News 8's Danny Carlson is live with what we know tonight. Danny? Well, Sue, we have been able to confirm that Sierra Selden Ruffin is off the job tonight, suspended without pay until the felony case against her wraps up. We also learned that all of this started through a DHS investigation, and that is what led to the criminal charges. Do you think the fact that she worked at DHS affected the DHS internal investigation at all? I don't think so. Um, I think it's a pretty standard process for the DHS investigators to go through investigating whoever it might be. And they, tend, they tend to handle all those investigations. Anything of a more serious nature or a, you know, a violent crime or a crime against a person, I'm sure we would have had an investigation for them. The fraud in itself, according to Michigan State Police Lieutenant Chris McIntyre, is not all that uncommon. So far this year, Michigan State Police in Kent, Ottawa, and Muskegon counties have handled 29 cases cases of welfare fraud, Sierra Selden Ruffins is the only case involving a DHS employee. I don't think we have a kind of systemic problem within DHS. This is just a person that violated the rules and they've got to pay the same consequences as anybody else would have to. Selden Ruffin is accused of applying for welfare last year, then not reporting changes in her household income, including not telling DHS that she was getting checks from family members. Both of those things contributed to her bottom line, meaning the state says she took home nearly $3,000 in welfare benefits she wasn't entitled to. Maintain your trust in the Department of Human Services. Um, they're doing the right thing all the time and this is one person and you certainly can't judge an agency that's large as they are based on the, uh, the mistakes and poor judgment of one person. Now we did speak with the DHS spokesperson tonight and we asked if the suspect's mom, who is the current Kent County Director of Child Welfare, if she was a, the subject of any investigation. We didn't get a firm answer either way tonight. Sierra Selden Ruffin is due back in court December 2nd and she could face up to four years in prison if convicted. Live in Grand Rapids tonight, Danny Carlson, 24 Hour News 8. A big food stamp bust. The attorney general announces charges for a group accused of spending millions in Metro Detroit by using fraudulent EBT cards. Thank you for joining us this noon. I'm Rhonda Walker and Attorney General Dana Nessel says that these charges just scratch the surface of this scheme and just how vast it is. Pamela Osborne is following the story for us with new information on how this all worked, Pamela. Rhonda, this was quite sophisticated. 8,000 EBT card holders had their information and money from their accounts taken. That money was spent here to fund purchases at Sam's Club stores all across southeastern Michigan. In all, investigators say this ring was res responsible, rather, for making $4 million in fraudulent purchases. The unusual activity was first reported to state officials last year. The AG's newly formed force team, which is in partnership with Michigan State Police investigated. Three people were arrested and arraigned on federal charges last week. And here's what AG Dana Nessel is saying about the reach of this enterprise and how they profited. What happens in Michigan doesn't tend to stay in Michigan. And what we see more often than not in these types of cases is that you will have oftentimes victims over multiple states but also um, that the merchandise travels. And so the majority of those 8,000 people who had money taken from their EBT accounts, they actually are residents of California. There were some residents here in the state of Michigan and other states as well. And again, investigators are saying this is still an ongoing investigation. They fully anticipate that more people will face these federal charges down the road as this investigation continues. For now, reporting live in Detroit, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. According to court documents, six women in Allen County 
Academy are responsible for stealing and misusing food stamp funds. It all started after the food stamp program mistakenly gave one of those women an extra $3,000 in her account. News Channel 15's Randy Spieth joins us live tonight from the newsroom with more. Randy? Yeah, Mark, investigators say this happened after an air, after a, a power outage last summer, and that the funds were used between July and September of last year. Now the six women responsible are all facing criminal, or excuse me, felony theft charges. A probable cause affidavit says 22-year-old Dana Freeman of Fort Wayne is facing theft and corrupt business influence charges for her involvement in illegally using food stamps. It was her electronic benefit card used to pay for groceries with food stamps that received an extra $3,000 due to an error last July. That same day, the Family and Social Services Administration caught the error and asked Freeman to come to the office to fix the problem. But these court documents say she never showed up. Instead, it says over the next several weeks, Freeman and several others illegally used the extra food stamps at several stores in Fort Wayne. Some of the funds were sold to others. This document says Freeman sold $300 in food stamps to Betty Anderson for $150. Anderson is the director of the voucher program at Fort Wayne's Housing Authority. We will do an internal investigation, uh, not so much um, because we think that some of our funds may or may not be involved. I don't think that's the case at all. We have no reason to believe that. The Housing Authority's executive director has worked with Anderson for 15 years, and he expects to discuss this issue with her when she returns to work later this week. I don't know if the, the, the um, issue was correct. We believe that a person is innocent until proven guilty in this country, and that's the premise that I'm going to go forward on. We did try to reach out to the state's Family and Social Services Administration. A spokesperson there did tell us that no one can comment while a criminal investigation is ongoing. Reporting live from the newsroom tonight, I'm Randy Spieth for News Channel 15.